Serve Robotics recently gave investors a lot of information to digest. So in this video, I'll be going through those most recent developments, the big news items like the acquisition of Vibu and the expansion into the Dallas Fort Worth area and why the company made those decisions and what investors need to know about those decisions. So let's take a look at the details. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. So Serve Robotics plans to launch with the Wing Pilot in Dallas in the coming weeks. And this aligns well with their plan to expand to the Dallas-Fort Worth area by the second quarter of 2025 in full scale. So the company's saying that now they've entered the second phase, which should generate a few hundred thousand dollars in revenue next year. And the work relates to Magna licensing software to create new products. Now they aim to generate several hundred thousand dollars per year in licensing revenue to Magna, which is a car manufacturing company that wants to use Serve Robotics software in robotics to help it manufacture the things that it manufactures. Remember, this is very high margin revenue for Serve Robotics, which needs that higher margin revenue desperately because in the initial growing phases, it's losing a lot of money on the bottom line while it's investing in research and development and investing in growth initiatives. So they also said that they're bringing the Vibu team on board to expand into kitchen automation. This is the acquisition the company announced in mid-November. Vibu and Serve are solving the same problem, which is labor shortage. And with the similar tech, which is AI and robotics, and for the same partners, right? The restaurants, the same customers. And so this will deepen their relationship with national change. And as they expand their delivery footprint, it can accelerate their integration with them. And they think that their relationship with these restaurants will be easier to develop if they have the restaurant robotics as well not only delivery robotics but also restaurant robotics that way when they go to talk to these restaurant companies they can offer them a two-step solution they can say you can choose one of these two things or you can choose both of them you can try out one first and then if you like it you can get the second one and anyways it's the same customers that they're dealing with so they're going to have a dialogue with these customers in any case and once these customers have identified they have labor shortages for instance domino's is one company that's been in the news for several years now because of labor shortages ever since the economic reopening the surprising things about domino's restaurants is that the pizza delivery business continues to thrive but the difficulty has been in getting people to deliver the pizzas and work at these locations. I thought that when economic reopening got underway, that Domino's demand for pizza would decrease, but that hadn't been the case. People still ordered pizza just about as much as they were ordering when they were locked down and at home. The difficulty for Domino's has been that when economies reopened, there was a lot more businesses that reopened and hired people. And so that made it more difficult for Domino's to hire and retain talent. And so that's just one company that is having significant labor shortages and would love more automation in its service in delivery and in the kitchen if they can have that effectively. So Serve Robotics definitely has a market for its product and it's just a matter of them being able to deliver these capabilities at a reasonable price point for their customers. So their acquisition company that they just uh, acquired is already uh, doing the Autocado, which is in pilot at Chipotle. And if all goes well with that stage gate validation process, it could roll out to more stores and bring in a fresh revenue stream for Serve Robotics now that it acquired this company. But the company is saying that it's a small deal. Uh, the smaller size of the deal, since it's so small, they're not disclosing the terms, but they are sharing that it's an all stock transaction, which is beneficial for Serve in that it won't eat into its uh, cash balance, but it also could dilute shareholders because that will increase the share count. And if or when the company does become profitable, 
that profit will be need to split among more shares. Longer term, Serve Robotics is only starting with food delivery and they hope to expand into other verticals. Food delivery is just the beginning. And DoorDash did something similar. DoorDash, which started with food delivery and Uber Eats as well, started with food delivery and then expanded into other areas like grocery, like um, a flower delivery and you know pet food delivery uh, and other categories, uh, flowers, things that might be perishable, things that you might want in a hurry in less than an hour. So all of those things that you might want in a hurry in less than an hour are areas that serve robotics can penetrate and deliver. And so that's what they're aiming to do. Start with food delivery because that's the most obvious use case. That's the largest market right now for deliveries. And then they want to expand further and then use their core robotics technology to power new robot forms that coexist with humans. So it's a robotics company that is starting with food delivery because that's the area they see the biggest opportunity and their strategic partner Uber helps them with markets and getting the data to decide which markets to enter and which markets have the highest cost of labor, the highest driver expense, which can be offset with the robotics. And so the food delivery market is a no brainer and the cost of labor is only going to increase from here. And the cost of delivery is only going to increase with not just the increasing cost of labor the people, but also the increasing cost of transportation in cars, in fuel, whether it be um, whether you're doing a internal combustion engine vehicle or an electric vehicle, the cost of operating those are only increasing. And so the total cost of delivery is increasing at a rate that's much faster than inflation. And so restaurants need to get this under control because customers have demonstrated that they want food delivered. The demand for this category is increasing significantly and customers are willing to pay a fee for this service. But restaurants still can't let costs get out of control. And so robotics is one way to keep those costs under control, especially in cities like Los Angeles, where they're initially operating because it's so heavily populated and so dense that so many people are living in such close proximity. They can deliver these uh, food deliveries to people in short distances, but there's a lot of people available to deliver to. So this is what uh, Serve Robotics investors need to know. Uh, of course, this is at least what you need to know. There's so much more about this company. And I have several videos on Serve Robotics on my channel. If you're interested in this company, uh, I suggest you watch all of those videos that I have available. Hey everyone, I'm excited to announce that my book is finally available for sale. I've been working on it for more than a year now, so I'm really excited to finally share this with you now. It goes through my framework for evaluating stocks. Some of you often ask why I like this stock or why I like the other stock. And this framework provides you the things that I look at when I'm evaluating stocks. I've added the link in the description below.